It's Aloha Sunday. Big race was yesterday. Woo! Do 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 do. And it's breakfast with Bob. Championship edition here at beautiful Four Seasons Resort, Hualalai. My name is Bob Babbitt. We're here for Breakfast with Bob Championship Edition. We're brought to you by Hoka One One Polar, Halo Neuroscience, VeloFix Today's Plan, Norma Tech Triathlete Magazine. Our guest to kick things off, third place yesterday, his final time, 8.01.09, which I think would have broke the world record, yep. right? <laughs> Mr. David McNamee. How you doing, David? Yeah, good. A bit tired and sore today. You know, this Ironman business is tough, but yeah, <laughs> I'm good. It's great to be back. I love that. And so you you took the little victory lap at the end there. You, were, you weren't in any hurry to get across that finish line. Uh, of course not. You know, you have to enjoy these things. You know, I've trained for 10 months and yeah, I had the time to enjoy the finishing shoot and you know, the crowds here are incredible and the atmosphere, the energy is, you know, yesterday those final 100 meters was, it's a moment that's always going to be with me. So last year when you finished third, I'm sure obviously you, if you're going to be on the podium, you don't really want to be looking up at anybody. So this year the, was the training specific to, okay, how do I get from three to two to one? Yeah, obviously I came back this year wanting to win. I think, you know, you come third. You know, you're there. You, know, you want to go and win it. You right. know, you don't come back to come third again. You know, right. I'm happy. You know, eight hours in a minute. You know, it's good going. So with when you when you're racing someone like Patrick Lange, and there was a there was a point during the race where you're running with other guys, and what energy do you get when you're when you're running with other really really fast guys? Rather than a lot of times you're coming up through the field and just passing people. Uh, I think sort of. Well, it's good to always be passing people. Yes, yes. Let, let's be honest. It's good. <laughs> Way better. And then when you get into those single digits, it gets exciting. And then, you know, you get into third and you're like, breakfast with Bob, breakfast with Bob. Just keep on going. <laughs> Free breakfast tomorrow. Back to four seasons. Yeah, come Back on. Four seasons. Back come to on. the dreamland. <laughs> Back uh, to dreamland. I like that. But yeah, when you're running with, yeah, it's similar to like when you're biking and swimming together. It's just like, it's that little bit extra of encouragement and motivation but yeah to be honest as a world championships you don't need any more motivation than that the bike ride yesterday this one of the few years i've been here where the wind didn't seem to be an issue how did that make the race play out for you uh, i think it sort of well allowed for some very quick times yes uh but yeah i think yeah i just kept waiting for the wind to hit me at some point and yeah, it just never happened. Never and happened, it, yeah. Yeah, I think sort of, I don't know if it changed the dynamics of the race. I think some very strong swimmers and some exceptional cyclists changed the dynamics of the race yesterday. And yeah, I think sort of, yeah, the weather just allowed us to go very, very quick. So after you have a performance like this and you've been, you know, you trained, did, where did you train during this season? Do you train in Girona still? Yeah, so... Uh, I've lived it for three years now. You know, it's very much home for me now. Yes. Yeah. For year round. Yeah. 52 weeks of the year. Ah, so yeah. Scotland, it's you visit on the holidays. Yeah, I obviously go home <laughs> whenever I can and see the family, but, you know, I have to be in Spain and get the suntan. Of course you do. Yeah, look, at look. There's, there's something there. <laughs> for a Scottish person, this is very good. <laughs> How big is the sport getting in Scotland now? Obviously, you've had two great performances to year, two years in a row. Yeah, it's, every year it's getting bigger and bigger in the UK. And yesterday we had two guys in the top 10 with Joe Skipper as well. And that's the first time we've ever had that. So, yeah, yes, it's great that the guys are finally catching up with the girls. We've had such great success in United Kingdom with the females here in the island. And yeah, thankfully it's taken a long time, but you know, we're sort of figuring it out now. So we were talking beforehand about, because uh, a lot of guys come from track background and move to cross country and things like that. You were never a track guy. No, I was a swimmer. Always I, I, I've got no idea how I can win. I sp spent my whole youth in a swimming pool and, and when did you realize that you could run uh i think when i was like 17 18 so, I just, so you really didn't yeah. start running till later no and then it took me for like one year and then i realized 
I actually run better than I swim. And that's hard when you've spent 10 years in a swimming pool. And, and you realize, why didn't I start running earlier? Very much. And it's like, yeah, then you realize, God, I spent 10 years in a swimming pool to be very bad at swimming. <laughs> were you, was the idea as a swimmer, were you trying to be an Olympic guy? Or what, was your, what were your strokes and what was your distances? Uh, so I was a freestyler, okay. fun crawl. And yeah, like when I grew up, my heroes were guys like Grant Hackett, Ian Thorpe, these like Australian powerhouse, powerhouse swimmers. And yeah, yes. and they were from Australia and I was cool, cool. I thought that must be cool, Australia. Yes. And yeah, they were my heroes when I was a kid. And was there a point where you realized, okay, this is not going to happen. I'm not going to, I'm not going to get to a high level in swimming. Yeah, I think so. Sort of. I got to the age of 16 and when you realize all your personal records were from the age of 12, 13, you're like, yeah, this isn't going so well. But you still wanted to be a professional athlete or had you already started to move into maybe a real job? Yeah, so I had a real job. I sort of stacked shells before I went to university and then, yeah, university, I got more into triathlon and yeah. But yeah, to be honest, it's still a dream for me just being a professional athlete. And when did you realize the triathlon was going to be that ticket? Uh, I think it was my final year of university. I was at the point where I was like, well, I either have to commit and go full time at this triathlon or else I need to go and get a real job and yeah, getting being a triathlete sounded a lot better. And did you have sponsorship right away, or was it a type of thing where you just tried to go make a few dollars at the races? Is it prize money? Uh, sort of. I was doing the ITU stuff, and thankfully I was good enough to get some lottery funding, which is an incredible thing that we have in the UK. Yeah. And then, yeah, like prize money and stuff, and yeah, student loans and all that stuff. And yeah, it was very much just about surviving. And did you, with the ITU style of racing, it's so different. It's almost like a criterium on the bike, and it's draft legal, and not necessarily the best guy wins, but the most strategy wins. When did you realize that maybe the longer distance and the non-drafting would be better for me? Uh, I think, as you say, I always found ITU frustrating in that, yeah. you know, yeah, there's times where, you know, you spend 15, 16 hours a week training your bike and then you get to a race and you can't really do anything with that. Right. And yeah, I just found it frustrating. I very much love doing my own race and sort of focusing on myself. And yeah, I think just mentally, sort of Ironman very much suits me. And yeah, I love being out there for a long time. I love suffering. And yeah, this is the You love sport. suffering? Yeah. Really? I don't know. Yeah, of course. Like, Ironman is about who can suffer the most for longest so when what race was it where you felt like okay this is the ultimate i have suffered the entire day this this was awful but it was great at the same time oh, i think yesterday i think running up from the energy lab yesterday yes as i was finally getting back well back finally getting onto the podium i was like this is awesome but this hurts so much <laughs> this is and then i was just like running back along the queen gate thinking free breakfast tomorrow we have to do this <laughs> So, how, uh, what place were you when you were when you started off on the run? Uh, so I think I started in nineteenth. Nineteenth. Yeah, and that's a long way down. It and is. Does it is it hard when you're that far down, or is that something you're used to? Uh, it's still tough. Last year I was tenth coming off the bike. So you know you're on the you know yeah, you're on stage. Yeah, but when you get to nineteenth, and it's at the point where like, you know, people are like shouting, "Come on, you can go top ten. and I'm like. I didn't come here for top 10. I was third last year. Yeah, what yeah, are you guys I, I, don't, about? I don't want to be top 10. I want to be wa the winner. I want to win this race. Yeah. And then when did you realize that, okay, my legs are there. I'm feeling good. Uh, I see three, four people up ahead. I, I can move myself, not just top 10, but maybe win this race. Uh, I think going out along the Queen K, that's when sort of you get 17, 18 kilometers into the run. And people start tiring. And yeah, all of a sudden I was getting into these single digit numbers and then I saw Javi up the road and I was like, that's Javier Gomez. Probably one of the greatest triathletes to ever walk the earth. I raced Javier for seven years in the ITU and never once have I ever ran past him. Yes. I, 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 I almost wanted to stop for a photo at that point. <laughs> I was like, come on, somebody, where's the photographer? I need a photo of this. This is something I've dreamt about. Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah, and there's no photo. No, f- I'm sure there's photos. It happened, but we've got proof it actually happened. It was right. You passed Javier Gomez. Yeah. It's it, he's first ballot Hall of Famer. He's going to be amazing. Oh, and incredible. you went by him like you're standing still. Uh, I wouldn't say he was like standing still, but yeah. He wasn't running like he does in ITU. No. So then you go by Javier. And what place was that point? Uh, that was sixth place. Okay, so you're up to sixth. And then, yeah, and then... And you get I a little confidence from passing Javier Gomez. Yeah. You know you're running well. Because it's not like even when Javier is not running well, he still... He still looks good. He still looks good, yeah. Yeah, he's probably still... Having Patrick still look the best running. Yeah, no matter what speed Javier goes at, he just looks good. He looked really good, but obviously you're going faster than him. Yeah. So who was next? And then Cameron Wolf soon yes. after that. And then there was the battle between uh, Braden and Tim O'Donnell. Yes. And I was like... I was running up the energy line. And I was like, well... They're so concentrating each other. They were. That they like, were surging on each other. If I can just get there and just like just run past, just not even think about it. Like don't, you know, there's tactics of do you sit behind for a little bit? And I was like, no, no, just run fast and just act as if this is just like a Sunday run for you and that it's not even hurting. So that way, they let them continue to worry about each other. Yeah, and you guys keep racing I, each other, and don't, don't don't notice this guy on the outside of you running by both of you. Basically, yeah, just like. <laughs> So don't don't breathe hard, you know. Just make it look effortless. And they bought it. I think so. And <laughs> it really wasn't effortless. It hurt a lot. It's hard, right? Yeah, it's very hard. I don't. Yeah. Again, I don't know why I love the suffering. I mean, was there, was there a point ever where you're going? I'm in nineteenth place. I was third last year. I, it, my air conditioned room sounds pretty good. <laughs> Do you, do you ever go down that path, or is the suffering just too enticing? No, nah, this is the World Championships, and no matter what, you finish the race. Yes. You see that with Jan last year, you finish the race. And yeah, for me, yeah, my day yesterday was very average for the first three, four hours. I got to the bike turnaround point, and I was like, you're very average today. I was like, you need to change this. I was like, yeah, I was like, you've trained for 10 months, and let's not be average today. So you're, you're basically having this discussion with yourself. Oh, very much. And then you realize that you've let the bike group get too far ahead. And you're like, oh, sure, I need to stop talking to myself and keep on going. <laughs> you're having yeah. this nice discussion and people are leaving you. Yeah, and like people just think I'm crazy that I'm speaking to myself. But, you know, it worked. Who cares? Yeah. So then when did, uh, when did you move into third? Uh, just coming out up from the energy lab. And, yeah. I would love to say it's like an incredible moment, but it's a great moment. But then there's also the fear of you don't want to be the guy that's ran into third and then to blow up. right. Yeah, nobody wants that. Because then you don't get breakfast. Then you don't get breakfast. And I love the breakfast. Uh, Why wouldn't you? We're at Four Seasons. Yeah, it's it's the most beautiful place. I know. It's the most beautiful place on the planet. I I never get to come to places like this. (laughs) This is, don't you have this in Scotland? Uh, Similar. (laughs) <laughs> but we have like something called Loch Ness in Scotland. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Loch Ness is this is Nessie sort of like would this. Be, yeah. Nessie would be would yeah, be in there. Basically, you're becoming like Nessie. You just come out 19th and you're just gobbling just people like up the whole way. Maybe next year I can keep on gobbling until first place. So when you see Patrick coming out of the lab and you see Bart, are you thinking to yourself, I don't know if I can get those guys, or are you thinking, you know what, if I keep going? Nah, I seen. <laughs> like Patrick is yeah uh, Patrick's not going to blow up no and Bart knows how to run very well so I was like okay first and second are gone but you know Tim and Braden they seem to like each other's company quite a lot right now and yes that's always a sign that they're both struggling right uh, yeah so that was me I was like oh this could be the podium again <laughs> love that and once you know you're on the podium and you're coming down Lee Drive is there a better feeling than that I mean, is it no, better to be third here or win a different race? Ah, uh, third here. This is the World Championships. This is this is the biggest day in our sports. And yes, there was probably the biggest day of all time with Patrick going seven fifty two. Yeah, and you going under the old course record yeah. from last year. And you know, every year I get faster and faster, but it's just not fast enough. The people keep getting faster. Yeah. So how fast now? I mean, it was funny for years. People saying, "Will somebody break eight hours?" Last year, Patrick goes eight on one. We're like, "Okay, we're on the verge." But then he goes seven fifty two. Doesn't just go seven fifty nine fifty nine. And see, how does this change the way you look towards next year when someone goes that fast? Or do you look at the times and think, you know what? It was a really fast day, and next year probably is not going to be like that. 
Yeah, I think yes, there's a fast day, but I think also, yesterday people always talk about Patrick Eyes oh, weak in the bike. Whereas yesterday night he came out the swim behind and he made the move in the bike to get himself to where he needed to be. Right. So I think that's it. I need to move my bike on to where I ultimately you can't start the run behind Patrick. No, and you can't start the run 19th place yeah. if you want to win. It's hard to make up. You can run your way in a top five and obviously top three, but you, you're, you have too much of a deficit. Oh, especially, especially now there's such depth to right. the field. And yeah, like, I think we're at the point where every year we'll be looking at sub eight levels. Forever. What, for you as a top three guy, two years in a row, does this change things for you back home in Scotland? Is there more awareness? Like we talked the other day yeah. that the awards banquets are all like a month ago. Yeah. Now they're in the winter, and it's like, well, really not much for the effort because all the awards are already given out. Yeah, but, you know, we don't, well, I get the best award tonight, you know. Yes, you do. And for me, that's the most important, and yeah. I'll go home. I'm sure we'll have some more partying and enjoy the moment. And, yeah, then it's back to work to try and, yeah, be the winner next year. Love it. How about a round of applause for David McNamee? <laughs> Poncho Man. Oh! Take us out. It's Aloha Sunday. The big race was yesterday. Woo! And it's breakfast with Bob. And our man, Poncho Man. Hello, everybody.